I suppose I, I'll begin by saying that when I was asked to participate on this panel there a, a, a few weeks ago, I, I got um, I got the frights because I know very little about open scholarship. And when I was thinking this morning uh, of my, my reflection and reading over the last few weeks, I realized that anything I have learned up until today about open scholarship or open data has been because of open access journals and open access information on the internet. Um, so look, I'm going to talk to you from a public library point of view. Um, and as with all public libraries, we're local libraries. So um, it, I'll be bringing it back to the local. Uh, the best definition I, I came across in my own bit of research was from the Open Scholarship Community in Galway, OSCG, um, and they kind of defined open scholarship as, as, as in their aims to make research and education accessible, reproducible and freely available to people within and outside of the academic or academia. Um, and then it clicked with me and it made sense to me what open data and what open scholarship was. And I feel that public libraries have an important role, and I know um, uh, David mentioned it earlier on, but we have an important role to play in terms of leadership um, for open data initiatives. Um, I suppose public libraries in general will be seen as trusted organisation. Um, we have, uh, I suppose, we're front facing with the, our communities and with the public, and we have a responsibility there to provide uh, trusted, reliable information and to help people navigate that information because there's there's a huge amount of it out there and um, expectations among the public have, are also rising um, and they need access to government information and local government information and public libraries being local authority libraries have an important role to play in the dissemination and curation of local government data um, i suppose the, the people we serve are entitled to the information we have and we have to provide the opportunity to help them gain access to that information in an understandable uh, and literacy friendly way in plain English, if, if at all possible. Um, I suppose in terms of the role of public libraries, what, what can we do? I suppose we, we can help in connecting data users, we can help in connecting data producers, uh, showing the importance of, of local data, uh, developing kind of open data literacy, uh, advocating for ethical, responsible and accessible local government data, making local government data more usable for general public. Um, I suppose providing a bit of expertise on data management, the creation of data, of course, the publishing of data, the archiving of data and the promotion of media literacy. Um, I suppose to summarize that, we have a role, our public libraries have a role in community engagement and community capacity building in the curation of information, in the publishing of new information, and in supporting local organizations and agencies. It's important to say that, you know, collaboration is key uh, with, with open scholarship and with, with making data available. Um, the challenges involved, uh, the ones I've been thinking about and reflecting on, I suppose, ex staff expertise and, and knowledge, you know, training is needed. Um, Public libraries are very busy environments. It's a, they're generally speaking a non-academic environment. Um, you know, there's not a huge amount of research goes on. We're very much kind of day-to-day -day working with public and working with the community. So there is um, a fair bit to learn in terms of how we can we can contribute to the open scholarship um, community and world. Uh, I suppose we can help by identifying what uh, local data needs to be curated and made available. Um, as I mentioned already, the volume of data out there is it can be overwhelming. And for an ordinary person, um, you know, it's, it's quite frightening and trying to navigate your way around that is, is sometimes impossible. Um, there's, uh, I suppose, cooperation, as I mentioned, but cooperation within our own local government and local authority departments, you know, to, to kind of curate and make available all the information that's gathered um, within county councils and within local authorities. They're highly complex organisations with huge amounts of responsibility and, and scope. And to gather all that information and, and make it available is, is a challenge. Um, Partnerships with external agencies, finding the time to do it, building the relationships. I mean, in Carlo, to, to bring it back to local, we have two third level institutions. Um, I would admit that we should be working with them more. Um, it's after opening up my eyes a little bit to how we can work more with um, the third level institutions and, and help make 
whatever information and open data they have more accessible to our communities. Um, and I suppose capacity is, is an issue. Um, you know, ICT capacity to develop open data systems or archives, whatever, you know, every day is a learning day, so we have to keep going. Uh, I know David mentioned uh, e-books earlier on as well. It's a huge issue in public libraries now at this stage. With, with COVID-19 and with the pandemic, there's been a massive increase in the amount of, um, I suppose, e-book usage. But where do we find the money to, to support that? And where do we find the money going into the future to support that growth in, in, in use? Um, funding uh, is, is, is a big issue. It goes back to the ebooks, but also, you know, the, the funding to, to conduct research. As I said, it's not a, a, a natural thing for, for public library authorities to conduct that research. Um, it's not part of our operational budgets. We would rely on external funding from the, the DRCD, from the Department of, of Rural and Community Development or wherever to help us to do that. Um, in terms of potential and current local projects, um, uh, I suppose demographic profiles of the county um, will be useful, say from a branch library or from a library operational point of view, having demographic information for different areas of the county is always beneficial in terms of the, um, to help us understand the characteristics and particular needs of local communities. Um, mapping public buildings and amenities is always a useful um, thing to do and good for the public. Um, I know the local enterprise office locally here in Carlo did a survey there the year before last. Um, I suppose Carlo, just to, to put it in context, the second smallest county in Ireland, um, bordered by five different, five other counties, all bigger than us. Um, but, you know, we did, a, 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 the Leo did a traffic and people movement uh, survey. So traffic uh, in and out of the county for work purposes. And that was very useful um, information that they made freely available. Um, programming, I suppose we could do more. Uh, I suppose, as I mentioned, public libraries are, are the front face of the community in terms of reaching uh, the public and reaching the community. We could do a lot in terms of events and spreading knowledge and, and information about open access and how to, to, to deal with uh, all the data that's out there. Um, some local examples, I suppose we're, we're currently in, in Carlo, we're building a digital repository, a digital archive, and we hope to, to make all our, our, a lot of content in our archive freely available for everyone out there properly um, catalogued, etc. Um, we work closely in partnership with the Carlow County Museum and the intention will be in the future to, to do 3D images of museum artifacts and make that available. Um, in terms of data publishing, I suppose in a very small way, we, we contribute or have contributed in the last couple of years. A uh, decade of centenaries last year, we did a, a research paper on uh, Kevin Barry and the oral tradition, which we published and made freely available. Uh, we took part in a family literacy project called Story Streets, funded by uh, Department of Rural and Community Development uh, a couple of years ago. And we produced a, a kind of a research paper from that, our findings from it, and uh, a toolkit for, for running that kind of a program in other uh, library authorities. And currently we're involved in a, a research paper on trying to make Carlow a literacy friendly county. Um, and again, a toolkit will be provided um, or created out of that to help organisations uh, around the county, no matter whether they're public or private, to raise literacy awareness among adults in particular. Um, we also have a podcast, um, which is uh, basically the, the local newspaper that we've been uh, documenting for the last year and making available on a weekly basis. So that's the top newspaper podcast. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's actually a worldwide listenership to it. So it brings the local to a worldwide audience, which is also very important. But probably the, the, the most exciting one that um, we're involved in as a library authority, um, and we had our opening uh, conference yesterday, Carlow County Council are the lead agency in the EU project called Craft Hub. And... Um, Craft Hub, I suppose, it's, it's investigating and documenting craft skills and processes throughout Europe. There's 12 partner countries in, in, in the project, and it's focused on craft in the context of cultural heritage and its continuing relevance in a contemporary practice. Um, so 
part of it is uh, there's residencies, there's sharing of information, there's all sorts of stuff, but a big part of it is the creation of a digital repository in the form of a material library. Um, and multimedia content. And I suppose it's addressing the heritage concerns and exploring and documenting at-risk and lost, lost craft skills and processes. So it will form a, a, an amazing resource um, for anyone in the craft industry or interested in craft. Um, so you can get that on www.crafthub.eu and you'll, you'll get all the information you need there. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Um, as, as I said at the beginning, I'm a novice, novice in, in, in the open scholarship world. Um, I was heartened when Justin said to me that, that that's OK. <laughs> um, and I hope I've, I've given them enough food for thought. Uh, so thanks very much. And, and I'm delighted to be involved today.